there, lovers. Today, we are talking about oogliness, ugliness, unattractiveness. And it should come as no shock that when you Google it and look through all the books, what actually makes people ugly is their personality versus their physical attributes. It isn't until somebody opens their mouth and says, I used to play football against Silmar High School. Aren't you kind of small to play football? Silmar, um. I've never been a barista, is that what you call yourselves? No, no. I'm half Ecuadorian. Uh, Mexican and Spanish. You must be like the richest person in your family then. Uh, that, that's weird. That our brain actually makes a final decision and says, yeah, that person is ugly. In no particular order, the first oogly trait is conceitedness. Now conceitedness is an overinflation of self, of worth, and an emphasis on material value. Now this is my general rule of thumb. Self-confidence is extremely crucial. So when I walk into a room, I tell myself, you strong, you smart, you important, you are beautiful, you are capable. But common sense says, don't you ever, 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 ever say those things out loud. When you overvalue yourself, they tend to drastically undervalue you. For example, when you go shopping, you see a shirt that you like. Oh, it's like a dope ass shirt. You pick it up, see that price tag, and then all of a sudden you're like, this plain ass, boring ass, non cut properly ass, bad sewn ass shirt. So when we see somebody who again puts himself on this pedestal, it makes us want to take our ax out and chop them right on down. This one is actually known as the anti sex equation neediness and constantly questioning your importance in other people's lives. Now a needy person has told themselves that they are not enough and they want to fill that gap with other people's opinion of themselves. So they are constantly on the prowl for attention, affirmation, acceptance, things that we all inherently want but when desperation is attached to that it creates the exact opposite effect. Because of the fact that we are a cooperation based society, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, everything is cool. When we're around somebody who needs from us and who wants from us, it creates a repulsion. So in effect, the person who is needy tries harder and that pushes them further and further away from the goal and people. In the spirit of number three, I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet. A very oogly quality is windbaggery. Somebody who doesn't have that internal shut the up clock. Everyone's favorite topic is themselves. Everyone's favorite question is, what can you do for me? So when we're around somebody who's completely oblivious to that and goes on and on and on about themselves or their interests, it again creates this severe desire to get away from that person and never return. Off the back of that is selfishness, narcissism, and cheapness. And I don't mean cheap like you wanna save a dollar, cheap like I wanna save my dollar so I can go ahead and spend yours. Selfishness is about having an obsessive and exclusive concern with one's own needs and desires. Not to be confused with self-fullness, which I actually believe in. And self-fullness comes from Maslow's hierarchy of needs that says, once all of your basic needs are met, you can then look onto the needs of others. Now a selfish person, that staircase never ever finishes. They are constantly trying to get more. And last but not least is grimness. Somebody who lacks luster for life, lacks compassion for others because they fail to see the good in the world. Now a grim person isn't necessarily a clinically diagnosed depressed person, but just somebody in general who complains a lot. Now if you sense you might be on the grim side, perhaps it's a part of your sense of humor, I would definitely try to be mindful of that. Because while a little bit of self depreciating humor and negativity and sarcasm can be good, a lot of it can be extremely repulsive. And here is a basic and very simple cure if you do err on the side of grim. Forcing yourself to smile. This creates the exact same endorphins and neurochemicals in the brain to be released. A fake smile is just as good as a real smile. So if you do this for 10 minutes a day, you will automatically lift your mood and your outlook on life. In addition, it's great facial yoga and prevents wrinkles. So those are my top five oogle qualities. If you have one I didn't list, write it down below so we all get to know and steer clear from that trait. Also, here's where things get fun. I didn't just make this list. I went and tested it out. I went on a first date and I essentially enacted all of these characteristics to see if the person would still want a second date. So this is all a part of Sham Booty is Your Perfect Date season two. If you guys recall, season one is where I went on 10 first dates without the help of hair, makeup, and wardrobe to see if I could create 10 strong connections with complete strangers. That season was a massive success. So we went on to season two where every episode, I'm trying out a different psychological experiment. On the first episode though, which is up right now, I did exactly what we just talked about. I made myself into my date's ideal 
physical type, which happened to be the actress Priyanka Chopra. But on the flip side, I made myself the opposite of the mental type. I'm half Ecuadorian, uh, Mexican, and Spanish. You must be like the richest person in your family then. Uh, that, that's weird. That's a weird thing to say. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel weird. I was the first to go to college. That's amazing. That Yeah, that makes sense. Wasn't the first to graduate, though. What does that mean? Because I didn't graduate. Oh, okay. Did the weed get in the way of that? So you guys can actually go and watch how this date went down. If you guys recall from season one, the guys on these dates thought they were on a blind date show. They didn't realize that I'm a trained professional and I was there to mess with them in copious amounts of ways. So his reactions were insanely priceless. If you go to full.sc slash shanbooty right now, you can get a one week free trial on full screen. It's a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu. In addition, if you are an AT&T customer, you get one year for free. My name is Shan Booty and I have over 10 years of experience as a sex and relationship educator. Last season, I gave you some universal bonding tips. This season, we're gonna try 10 different experiments on 10 different first dates. The question is, which one's gonna work for you? You can become someone's ideal match by mimicking their parent. No, looks are not enough alone to make you feel a true connection with someone. I'm Shannon. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So I'm stroking the bottle, and as I'm doing so naturally, the lemon bursts and squeezes. So juicy. What's your most treasured memory? The day I got divorced. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> oh, sorry, I wasn't listening. One more time? I could tell. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. <laughs> this is dating etiquette 101. Pay attention. It's the beauty inside is everything. My hypothesis, 80% of my subjects will say yes to a second date, and eight out of 10 of my experiments will be a success. I think the experiment's working. Watch closely, and one of these theories will work for you. Let's show you how to be the perfect date. I get it, girl. Oh, yeah, I get it, girl. Uh, yeah, 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 I get it, girl. Oh, and if you don't know, get it, girl.